Hallelujah. Welcome once again to another live broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintala. I want to especially welcome you this morning. If you're joining us, welcome to this live broadcast. Of course, this is a brand new day. This is the eighth day of the month of November. We want to thank God once again for granting us this great privilege to see another glorious day like this. This is the day of the Lord and we believe God to help us to walk in the light of truth for this brand new day. All right, let's see how we can share this. And I believe God for great things this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Oh, thank you, Father. All right, maybe we should just continue. Let's just continue. All right, let's just continue so we don't waste time. There's so much to unpack this morning. By the grace of God, there's so much to talk about. There's so much to uh, reflect on. And uh, I'm just excited this morning that uh, the Spirit of the Lord is here to lead us and, of course, to guide us in the path of truth. Uh, several things we believe God this morning to bring to our clarity. Of course, the Spirit of God has been speaking to us for a while now regarding the nature of the days that we're living. I just need to reduce my sound a bit. Thank you, Father. All right. The Spirit of the Lord has been speaking to us regarding the nature of the days that we live in and uh, several things we have been highlighting, we've been looking at, we've been trying to comprehend and understand, not just uh, about our own present you know, uh, um, region, but globally. And uh, I thank God for the fact that you know, we are able to begin to have a clearer understanding of the directions and, you know, and the movement of God for this brand new day. Of course, we are still at the twilight. We're still at the twilight of, you know, this glorious day. Several things are just beginning to shape up. We're beginning to see, as we've been looking at for a while, the formation of the hand of a man. Yes, we are looking into that. And uh, so we, we want to continually, you know, believe God to grant us directions and uh, insight in, in, in terms of being able to interpret the things the Spirit of God is sharing with us, is showing us to the realities on ground. Of course, one of the main challenges regarding the prophetic is the ability to interpret the concept of, and this is that that has been prophesied. So when we begin to see things happen within our, and around us, it is critically important that we have the prophetic insight all right, to give uh, uh, directions and, and, and insight into what is happening. And I think that is where we are right now. We believe in God to continually help us to have better understanding of the nature of the day so that we are not caught in a unprepared. We're not caught, you know, uh, uh, of God. We, we want to be ready. We want to know. We want to be able to have clarity regarding all of the things that are happening in the natural realm. I remember saying something a few days ago that, you know, things that are happening in the natural are indicators of what is what is happening in the spirit. All right. As much as we want to look at the spirit to understand the natural, it's also important that we understand the natural to see the spiritual. And I remember using, you know, the concept of the journey of Elijah. All right. When God was about to exit Elijah from the earth. All right. And Elijah said to Eli Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Gilgal. You wait here. God has sent me to Gilgal. And uh, of course, Gilgal is, is a natural place. It's a physical place. All of the places that were mentioned. All right. We're all, you know, f you know, physical places that, you know, you can get to. But there are things that are connected to physicality that deals with our operations in the things of the spirit. And I think that is a point the Lord has been emphasizing for a while now that I think we all need to begin to understand so that we don't take natural things or events in the natural. We don't take them for granted, which is something that I have seen or right, take place uh, uh, that is taking place, of course, in uh, in the past uh, uh, couple of months, particularly with uh, uh, regards to, you know, the 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 the. You know, the election of, of, of America and, of course, knowing that, you know, Biden now has been chosen as, you know, the, the president elect. And, you know, some some things are beginning to becoming even more clearer. And I think that is some of the things that I believe the spirit of the Lord will have us, 
you know, look into, you know, our ability to understand the times and the seasons because times and seasons are lived within the context of, of human life. Times and seasons are not just defined in some, you know, uh, spiritual, you know, dimension that are disconnected from realities in the human realm, right? So I'm believing God that we'll be able to understand when we see things happening in the natural human realm, how do we connect that to our sense of spirituality and how do we, you know, understand what God is saying to us through events, through situations like now, you know, the election you know, as 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 has been done. Of course, it's been contested in terms of its legality and all of that. But then, you know, I've got I've got some points that I really want to, you know, uh, flag out, hoping that some somebody will will you know will give will give a listen and respond adequately because as Christians, our values, our concept of of engagement ought to be sourced from the Word of God. And that means that we need a clear understanding of how to interpret the word of God in relating to situations, circumstances, people, events, all of the things that are happening around us. All right. They all have, you know, spiritual con you know, connotation. And of course, you know, the, 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 the spiritual has amen, a, a, a footing in the human realm. I like the concept in, in, uh, in the book of Genesis, when the Bible talk about, you know, the ladder of Jacob. In fact, maybe I should look at that uh, quickly because uh, there's something that I, I want to bring out. Hopefully it will kind of bring perspective to, you know, where we are. And of course, the days ahead, because the days ahead, uh, we, we, we need to be highly prepared. We need to be armed. We need to be, I mean, I mean, armed. we need to be armed with spiritual vision. We need to be armed with spiritual insight. We need to be armed with spiritual understanding. We need to have a clarity of what the spirit of the Lord, amen, is doing and is saying in our own life around us around our space and of course amen outside our you know our city and boundaries we've got to have that you know a, a immediate understanding and of course a broader prophetic perspective to life there are things happening in regions all right and we can be so lost we can be so you know engrossed in one dimension in one reality in one location to the point that we become blind all right to what god is doing outside you know our own boundary outside our own space which of course is related to our life remember that i mean god has got you know children across the globe the whole world belongs to god and we have to be interested in everything that god is interested in all right as much as yes we have to focus and and deal with our own life and try to fix our own life but we cannot you know so do it to the point that we are no longer, you know, you know, are, are connected. We are no longer engaging, all right, with our brethren outside, you know, our own state or, or, or you know, a, a place of ge geographical location. And I think that is a worrying thing that I'm seeing in the body of Christ. And I'm hoping that, all right, the Lord will help us to be able to address this issue. Because if we don't address it, then we are all going to suffer the consequence of neglect. All right, the Bible says we must encourage each other, amen. As the days of the Lord draw near, we've got to encourage, we've got to stand with each other, we've got to, you know, make sure that everyone, amen, is rightly resourced. All right, we, we have to do that, and these are some things that I'm looking into, and I'm hoping, I'm believing God that the Lord, all right, will help us to, you know, gain, you know, our, our, our clarity and understanding, even as we deal with, you know, this issue before us. You know, today, basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to bring, you know, spiritual, you know, spiritual or prophetic perspective, all right, to the nature of the days that we live in. And of course, uh, uh, look at how we can be more positioned in terms of our relevancy. Of course, everything starts with prayer, but after prayer, we need to move into strategic positions. We need to locate our own place. We need to find, amen, where heaven will have us connect. We need to find where heaven will have us, amen, you know, have our footing so that we all can contribute the bible says every part of the body of the body amen must con contribute his own nutrient must supply amen is his own grace such that the body can have full maturation 
All right, the body of Christ needs to be mature because a, a mature body will begin to help us to have a more robust prophetic understanding regarding, amen, events and 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 and, and life, amen, a, a, a much a, a more developed the body of Christ, amen. Imagine if an aspect of your body is not is dysfunctional, or you you know you 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 know you you got you got an injury. Let's say you've got an injury in your hand right now or in your feet. Of course, it affects you know uh, uh, how your body you know function the, the the general functionality of your body it does affect that all right if, if you if you've got an injury in your hand it will it will it will tell on how you're able to lift things up how you're able to do things how you're able to write you, you see so we we've got to we've got to go back and begin to look at amen the various aspects and i'm saying this on you know on, on some terms that i felt or right, needs to be looked into I just quickly want to uh, uh, bring out this uh, uh, scripture. Thank you, Father. Just want to, you know, go back to uh, a scripture and uh, see how we can connect that to. What I'm trying to say, a couple of things I'm trying to look into, all right, and uh, I'm believing God that the Lord will give us perspective, all right, regarding this uh, uh, issues because if 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 w the church, of course, has entered into into a time into a day where we just must we just must develop. We we need to develop, and and I'm saying that with all seriousness. I'm, I'm not just kind of making a statement. The church needs to mature. We need to grow. You know, I, 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 I was listening to some, you know, people, some fellow, fellow brother, you know, not listening, basically reading their, you know, their post on, you know, online talking about, you know, Donald Trump and, and, and Biden. And it's amazing how you find, you know, Christians, you know, who are, of course, supporting, you know, not a morally sound person. And and and, you, and and I'm and I'm asking myself. So on on what basis, on what ground does these people come to this conclusion? You know that all right. They, they don't like Donald Trump the way he he behaves and the way he you know he he carries himself and the way he talks. And and I'm saying if if that if that is the basis to to deciding who is who is chosen or who is who is right or wrong then something is you know fundamentally wrong with our concept of you know of maturity of spirituality if you will because while god amen speaks and promotes and wants us to be morally you know strong and right all right but we also understand that god doesn't choose people based on on their state of morality in fact when it comes to god using people in the marketplace all right god we use i mean for example look at i mean we're able to broadcast we're able to do this you know a, a live streaming basically without paying much or maybe what we pay for is the you know the, the the materials and the and the and and the you know instruments that one is using within the studio but the fact that one is able to stream life i mean i'm not paying anything for it god ministered to somebody knowingly or knowingly all right for the advancement of his kingdom for the for the for the projection of his counsels in the earth even if the person is going to shut it down tomorrow and even if the person shut it down tomorrow it will be because god allowed it I don't know if somebody is getting the point that I'm making. We have to develop. I think the concept of, you know, the sovereignty of God and God walking amen, among men. The Bible says he's a God who rules amen, among men. If we don't have that understanding at the at the at the front you know front lobe of our of our sense of spirituality we will stand amen as peter rejecting and fighting the things that god has allowed the things that god has approved and i see that that's one of the things that have played out in this you know a uh, 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 concluded election in america that many christians in fact i know some christians who are some of them are my acquaintance i won't call them friends who today you know they've distanced themselves from me because i chose the position that i mean personally if you ask me personally donald trump is not somebody that i will relate to that i will say okay i like as a person because i'm i'm a very principled person 
All right. And, 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 and of course, I also have a heart for people. I love people. I'm very cautious of how I say things, what I say. And I, okay, Donald Trump is not that kind of a person who will, will have to polish his word before he says it. He says things the way, he, you know, it comes out. And, and that has to do with his upbringing. Of course, that needs to be corrected. But I cannot say because of, you know, my own issue with him, then I decide, amen, to stand against what I believe, what I know that heaven, amen, has designed and ordained for him to carry out that is childishness and, I, and, 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 and to me if you ask me I think I, th th this election really has, has given us a score of you know the, mat the maturity of the church of the body of Christ not just you know the, the, the nation of America in terms of you know the, the, the people everybody's got their own opinion but I'm talking about the church because we're dealing with the church all right all of the things that is happening in on earth today can be sourced and can be looked at from various perspective from various philosophy in fact we we know where you know the the the, the, the general media you know uh, uh, empire stand when it comes to this issue it is clear that they hate you know this man and they want to do everything in fact they've done everything from the first day this man was elected they have done everything to stop him to malign him all right to you know to criticize him to, to even you know put all kinds of corruption on him that they've not been able to prove right i mean it, that's clear that is that is something on you know on on on, on you know on, on on the on the platform of you know the general public that we know this we know that you know few 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 weeks ago biden was caught his son and him was caught on a tape of of innocent cor corruption i mean things that are tantamount to treason that you you've partnered with china against your own nation and now the, the the same person is being chosen to be the president of a nation not even to to the to the point to say let's check this fact let's 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 see if this thing is actually right or wrong facebook shut it down twitter shut it down all other media house shut it down all hand is pointing against this man now like i said this is not about liking a man or don't like him if we say we want to rule we want to, we want to live life based on the stand of principle then it, it has to that principle has to apply to every aspect of life everyone particularly if it deals with an you know a sensitive position of leadership like that of you know uh, uh, the, the, the position of the presidency of america I see this as, you know, as a worrying trend that we need to really look at as a church and begin to pray effectively. Like I said, every, every, every aspect of society have their own view, have their own idea in terms of what they want to see. You know, everyone has their own narrative. My narrative, all right, is, is God's counsel, is God's, you know, purpose. If, if, if Biden is, is the chosen, is the one God is pointing to, I will back him up. Because we know that, amen, God, amen, whatever God chooses, whoever God chooses, amen, will advance his purpose. So it's not about liking somebody or don't like, or you're not liking the person. It's about, amen, what is God saying? And I think that is something that we are not hearing, that we're not seeing in the church, particularly in the mainstream church, not just in America, but even here, you know, for the fact that Donald Trump said certain things about Africa, you know, certain people have taken a position you know, you, you cannot do that as a believer. And I'm talking about Christians here. If we're dealing with unbelievers, that's fine. But you that you're a Christian, you're a believer, you should not, your decision in life, in fact, in your own personal life, you shouldn't be making decisions based on sentiment. If you have to make decisions, your decision should be made, amen, based on intelligence, based on the directions and the instructions of the Spirit. So it tells me, like I said earlier on, that amen, there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the church, in the body of Christ. Um, men of God, pastors, all right, you know, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, we've got job to do. We have a lot of job because, you know, we have seen that the church is still very much immature still very much in immature and it's important that we continually speak about this thing so that we can grow amen we can begin to really invest amen in the ministry of the teaching priest we need to be taught the ways of god the, the speakings of god the intentions of god we need to be taught how to shift our mindset amen from just what we want to see from just what we want to hear from just what we what we expect you know, most times God disappoints our expectation. 
And if you have the wrong expectation, you're going to be disappointed. If you have the wrong expectation about the things of God, you will end up all right, being disappointed. But being dis beyond, beyond being disappointed, you will end up all right, hurting other people. And of course, you know, basically indirectly standing against the advancement of the purposes of God. And I think that is what we're seeing. So this is a time where we need to begin to really deep look deep into our hearts into our life thank you my, my dear brother uh, uh brother joe thank you for connecting this morning really appreciate it we need to begin to have a clear understanding regarding amen the ways of god a lot of christians know about the act of god and before the act there are ways that we've got to understand if all we are building our christianity on is just the act of god we just want to see things happen and we don't understand the processes we don't understand amen the the, the, the directions in the instructions I, I, did you know you know that it took it took you know a moses 80 years to come to the point where he begins to tap into what is called the ways of God. You remember it was Moses who said, Lord, we will, if, and this is after God had, you know, you know, you know, trained him for 80 years. He brought out the children of Israel out of, you know, the land of bondage, which of course is what we're doing. We believe in God for leaders that will bring, amen, the people of God out of bondage. You know, the people of God are in bondage. Many of us are still in bondage of religion, man-made tradition. We're still in bondage of our, you know, our, you know, our, our societal ideology. All right, I'm an American, I'm a South African, I'm a Nigerian, you know, I'm a Ghanaian, you know, I'm a European. That is, that itself is a bondage. Many people are still in that bondage, in that mindset, because bondage is, is, is something that cripples us from pressing on, from moving on into what God has ordained for us. Whenever we cannot step into what God has ordained for us, we are in a, a, a form of bondage. And so God sent a Moses who was prepared, amen, 40 years. And then they added another 40 years. Because there are things in our life that needs to be adjusted. Things that we thought we know. Things that we thought we have achieved, we understand, we have finally got. You will, you will realize by the time they give you the first test. The first test that was given to Moses, he goofed, he made a mistake, he killed, he used his sentiment. All right? You cannot use sentiment in the things of God. He used sentiment to kill. He, you know, he, 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 thought, he, thought, he, he thought defending amen, an Israeli amen, against you know, a, 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 an Egyptian makes him a leader. You, you see, we've got to come to this understanding of the ways of God. Remember that when you know, the Lord of hosts appeared to Joshua. All right? When Joshua was about to go into the battle of Jericho, the Bible says the Lord appeared to him and Joshua immediately ran to this Lord of hosts and said, are you for us or against our enemy? You see, we still have that mindset. Yes, we may have enemy, but our battle is not flesh and blood. I don't have issue with Joe Biden and, and, the, and the Democratic Republic or, you know, the, the factional side of the, you know, uh, 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 um, the Republicans. No, I don't. No, no, in, in South Africa, no. God will use, you know, the EFF, he will use, or the, the DA, he will use the ANC, he will use whoever, amen, that is available. God will use them. The fact that God is using people does not mean that God approves their life. <laughs> that, that, that's something that many still do not understand. The fact that I'm being used of God does not mean that everything that I do, my, my sense of morality is approved in the sight of God. No, God will use a donkey if, it's a, if, we, if a donkey is available, all right. God will use, you know, a, 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 a stick. If a stick is available, God says, what is in your hand? He says, a rod. He says, well, from this day, I'm going to turn it to a special rod. You stretch the rod. All right. You see, there is something about the, 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 the current mindset of the, of, the, of the Christian community that is still fundamentally wrong. And to me, this past election, all right, and many of the things that are panning out, all right, in, 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 in this generation will be proving that, you know, so we have to know where we are making mistake so that when we want to begin to, you know, teach and correct, amen, and, and, and build up, we know the areas to emphasize, all right? There's so much that we have learned about how to get blessing, how to, you know, get a miracle, how to, you know, even, even that, you know, we still do not understand the, the counsels of God regarding his blessing for our life because we think that when God blesses us is to, is to be able to go and prove a point to that other church, to that other house, or right, to, you know, my friend, that finally you can see what God have done for me and, and you just want to. It that shows us how insecure and how childish we are. 
that even in the things that God gives to us, amen, we, we are still suffering, you know, that sense of childishness in terms of, you know, handling the things of God, the blessings of God. You know, I was sharing with one of our sisters um, not too long ago that many, many of us, all right, cannot come into the inheritance of God for our life. You know why? Because we can't even, we can't handle the blessing. They gave us a blessing. We can't handle it. The blessing just throws off, or throw us off guard. And before you know it, you lose your mind, you know, just because God has, you know, give, add some some rand or some dollars or some God knows what or they've promoted you and suddenly you you you, you become larger than life you, you 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 your sense of arrival suddenly grows bigger and you know we we don't we have no sense of life it's hot it's it's, it's cold here today so I'm just using a heater trying to up the heater so you see we have no sense of life we see everything, you know, for ourselves. If, if it's not working for me the way I want it to work for me. And, and that's selfishness. And we all have it. I have it to a certain degree. We all have it. The day we die to self, you know, self-centeredness, selfishness, the day we begin to understand the ways of God, we begin to understand, amen, the move of God. Because God will move, amen, using us, without necessarily amen needing us uh, i'm not sure if you understand what i'm trying to say god will god will do what he needs to do in our life all right if god needs to bless you to get to the next person he will do that now you think well god has blessed me uh, and that's it but not knowing that the, the, you are just a channel they blessed you because they needed to reach somebody they blessed you they gave you that revelation they gave you that wisdom they gave you that knowledge because they needed to reach somebody now you don't know that so you decide to build you know uh, 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 an, uh, an embankment you build a wall around the blessing so the so the, the blessings of God is not moving on it's not it's not projected it's not you know reaching to the third dimension all right yes god 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 first your second but then there is the next there's the third dimension that god wants that thing to reach but because you are so selfish amen in your ways in your in your in your attitude in your outlook all right you just build a wall around that thing and that thing becomes a maggot that thing becomes a worm that's what god said to the children of israel all right this thing that i'm providing you you, you take just enough for the day you take just enough for the day. If you if you seek to you know to you know to keep this thing and store it in your house, it's gonna turn to something else. And all these are all spiritual principles that we need to understand. And I hope, I pray that somebody this morning will listen to me. I know it's Sunday morning and I know a lot of people are preparing to go to church. Well, this is church for me. We speak in the mind of God because we need to have clarity. We need to have perspective. We need to know what the Spirit of God, amen, is doing, not just in our own life, but around us. We need to see, when we look at things, we've got to have perspective we've got to have the right prophetic amen insight and and that means whatever we see must be accurately interpreted amen to heaven's divine intention have you noticed that whenever amen they they, they, they begin to you know uh, uh, bring a, a prophet amen into the scene just like jeremiah when when god will you know engage jeremiah as a prophet to the nation when they finish training him the first thing they ask him is what do you see it's not about a man being able to, you know, have a, have, have a visual, you know, uh, uh, you know, insight into what you've seen. What I mean, I can see a book before me. But what they're asking you is, amen, do you understand the meaning of the book? Do you understand the meaning of what you have seen? Do you understand why, amen, they've shown you that thing? Because if you don't have an understanding of prophetic activity that may be panning out in a natural political, you know, uh, 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 activity, if you don't understand what is going on, listen to this, you would just say, well, well, I see donald trump and i see joe biden you know and i see no no you you got to know the meaning amen of that vote that is being stolen or that is being counted you must have clarity because if you don't know that your conclusion and your understanding amen of of what you have seen is jeopardized is compromised and this is the problem we're having today even among those who claim they are into the prophetic we can talk about yes what has been written in the word of god what god wants to do but do we have a clear interpretation.
can we give interpretation amen to divine timing to you know to you know to to to, to you know to 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 time span in the prophetic you know sometimes in the prophetic god says something but you're seeing the contrary amen in the natural realm do we know how to interpret that do we know how to you know make sense of that because how can we make sense of things in the spirit when our mind is is still being regulated still being influenced by social media all right but by, by cnn and you know by a abc and you know all these god knows you know media houses that have been captured that they all they, they have their own agenda and their own narrative today many people's life all right are, are influenced by the by what they consume or on social media by what they watch by what they see you know you understand the news they hear by the sbcs of this world it's good to listen to news i listen to news but how do we interpret the news you know not too long ago i was saying to our you know i, I made a comment on a particular one of the key uh, uh, media houses here in south africa they were saying something about this election and i had to i had to put it there you know because they need to know that all of you are so blind you are the media you're supposed to you're supposed to be non-biased you're supposed to you know have a, a a balanced scale and this is something the spirit of the lord has been ministering to me of late we need to have a balanced scale but even the media houses <laughs> they decide their they 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 news and you know what they project in terms of news is based on amen where they get their adver advertisement from who pays them the most it's amazing that we live in a world today that is that is so captured by lies and deception and that is why we need a, a, an advanced prophetic community. We need men and women who have mature, not not you know uh, uh, you know sentimental, you know emotional, you know proclamations, and we call them prophets. And I've seen many of that here in South Africa, women who call themselves, you know, prophets of God, but they are very emotional, very sentimental, very selective. All right, their, their prophetic understanding is one is one sided. They have no balance because they, they, there are still areas, dimensions in them that have not come to submit, to surrender, all right, to the guidance, to the leading of the spirit. We cannot be prophetic if we don't have a solid, amen, balanced doctrinal foundation. Because at the end of the day, it is the word of God that regulates how, amen, we express dossier the Lord. Halalabush kayanda. It is the word of God that helps us to regulate dust here and the law. So you can be very prophetic and your prophetic expression is emotional, is sensual. That's why you hardly hear me say dust here and the law. But when I say dust here and the law, you better believe that I've heard from God. Regardless of the opposition, regardless of what may be happening around me in opposition to what has been said. Because I don't speak until I know that God says speak. Because I know that everything that I say are prophetic. I don't wait until I, you know, I have to put dust here the Lord, you know, before somebody knows that, oh, that guy is prophesying. No, if you're a spiritual person, you will know that, amen, the things that come out of the spirit, amen, by design are prophetic. I know that this morning the Lord wants me to say this thing. So regardless of what happened to me yesterday night, it's inconsequential. I'm just going to come here and proclaim and declare. Regardless of how I feel. Regardless of, you know, my condition. No, I, my mouth will speak and proclaim, amen, the will of God. And we need to have, if we are going to have, amen, the will of God, the counsels of God, the, the things of the Spirit, amen, come to the fore in South Africa. We have to have mature, mature people. I don't just want to say mature prophet. Yes, we need mature prophet to train, amen, the apprentice. Yes, we do need them, all right? And many of them will be coming forth in this season in time. Many that have been, I mean, you know, in the, in the cave. And when I mean in the cave, I don't, I don't mean that they are, you know, they, they, they are just immature in the cave. No. When you talk about cave prophet, remember I talked about that, that there are three kinds of prophets that the Spirit of the Lord will be releasing to us in this season in time. The cave prophets are those who are, teachers who will be teaching who will be empowering the saints the building you see we, we we train you know training are done in the cave when you are training people you don't you don't expose them you, you don't you know put them on the rooftop all right you don't you don't announce them you hide them the period of training is a season of being hidden being hidden was it just 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 josiah that was hidden in the temple 
was hidden because if you expose a man, a potential you know, leader that is still under training, listen, it's easy to, to finish, to take that person out. So some of us that are still amen, in, in the training, you are in the cave. And there is, a, there, is, there is one that I've been assigned to train you, to feed you, to empower you, to develop you, all right? to, to, to prep you, to make sure that every aspect of your life, amen, is, is matured, amen. Every aspect of your life, guess what? Different aspect of our life grows at different time. All right? There is a growth taking place, but the different aspect of our life grows at different time and different pace. And we have to be patient, amen, to have a corporate growth so that by the time our, you know, we are announced, see, when, when they announced Jesus, amen, at River Jordan, he was ready. He was ready. He's been, he's been training. And then they brought him to Jordan. As, as John baptized him, the scripture said that as he came out of the water, as he came to life, that was a that was symbolic of dying. Amen. He, he died and he rose again. As, as he came out of the water, what did we hear? The voice of God. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. What's the next word? Hear him. In other words, everything that will be coming out of his mouth is not like the things he knew amen, at the age of 12 were not the things of God. He knew, amen, the word of God. He knew the will of his father, but he was not mature. You see, you can know things. You can know, understand certain things, but you're not mature to express those things. Because just having, you know, a prophetic knowledge is, doesn't mean that, amen, we indeed are ready, amen, to engage. The nature of the day requires a, a caliber of maturity. Thank you, Jesus. The nature of the day requires that we mature, that we grow, that we develop. I'm just trying to get something here, please. Thank you, Father. The nature of the day demands that we mature, that we grow. That we come into divine alignment, agreement with the things of the Spirit. Because we'll be, we'll be needing to make certain decisions. Thank you, Father. We'll be needing to make certain decisions that will require that we have a sense of maturity. That will require that we have a sense of spiritual maturity. Now, there are a couple of points that I have I've penned down here. Let's see how we can track some of them. Like I said, the days that we live in requires that we are fully mature, that we are fully developed, that we are fully informed. All right? But this information will require that we grow. We require that we come to the house of one that can build us up, that can prep us. Listen, friends, all that is taking place right now, particularly in America, is not the end. This is just the beginning. It's the beginning of a long walk. It's the beginning of a protected spiritual battle. Those of us that are alive in this season in time, that are watching, that are viewing, that are seeing all that is taking place, we need to put it on record that we have to change our war gear. Now, I made a statement earlier. Let me go back to that statement. I said, the things that are happening in the natural speaks to us of the things that are panning out in the spirit realm. Remember, in the spirit realm, there are activity. There are okay. When we talk about the spirit realm, let's make this thing clear first. The Bible talks about the things of the spirit. So there are things in the spiritual realm. Basically, what do we mean when we say sp spiritual things? Means that we cannot see them. We, we cannot see them with our natural human eyes. Sometimes they give us, they, they kind of, you know, uh, uh, lift our sense of sense. They, they, they just 
you know lift our our or maybe the word is elevate our our sense of you know natural sense to have a glimpse to see so sometimes we see things in the flash you know there is like an invitation just to see some certain thing that we are not naturally permitted or is not a normal thing that we see now listen to this as for a christian for a spiritual person our sense of spirituality ought to be normal but we know that that is not true and the reason why I say ought to be normal is because we ought to be living in God. When you are living in God, then you should be living amen, a spiritual life. Meaning that we should be able to make sense of spiritual things. We should be able to make sense of spiritual things. Now, how do we make sense of spiritual things? Before I explain that, let me, let me, let me buttress, let me, let, me, let me further explain what I'm trying to say. Because when we say spiritual things, I think many of us have, have, have run with words without really understanding their meaning, without understanding their importance and sometimes their implications. Because when you say something is spiritual, it means that you are totally shifted from one dimension of, you know, of faculty, of, 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 of perspective, of living, of seeing things. The spiritual amen, is as real, is as tangible as a, as a natural human realm. But guess what? For you to be able to relate and connect to the spiritual realm, you must amen, step out of, the, out of this limited body, out of your limited mindset. That's why the Bible says we need to have the mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ allows us to, to connect, to interact with spiritual things. That's what it means. To have the mind of Christ means that we're able to relate, we're able to connect, we're able to interact with spiritual things. The mind of Christ amen, allow us to, you know, to make sense of things because it's in the mind of Christ that we have divine intelligence. We can know things spiritually all right, that we don't know how to express them, how to connect to them, how to interpret them. And that, that happens particularly in the place of prayer. All right? Uh, they say we will pray with with prayers of groanings that cannot be uttered with human language we're uttering words but we don't understand what we are saying that's why sometimes when we pray in the spirit they kind of give us interpretation of what we're saying all right you you so the reason why they're giving us interpretation is to benefit those who are hearing it you may know what you're talking about in fact you should know what you're talking about in terms of having a sense of what i'm saying in the spirit what i'm saying through tongues but for the for those people who you're praying with or the people around you that you're prophesying with to benefit remember whenever god gives to us or open us to the things of the spirit it is for our own benefit that is the basic law of the things of the spirit. It is for our own edification. It's for our own building up. It's for our own benefit. They give us the things of the spirit to benefit us. Meaning that the things of the spirit are there to enhance our life, to empower us, to, you know, to, to, to develop us, to, to bring us to maturity. When we talk about coming into the, the, the fullness of Christ, we're talking about amen, that dimension in two aspects. Coming to the fullness of Christ does not mean that suddenly, you know, uh, when we're walking on the road, we walk on air. Or walk on, or walk on road. Somebody, somebody starts start seeing, you know, fire, you know, uh, 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 on our head. Or, you know, you know, like, you know, you watch this, uh, the, these heroes, these American heroes. Or uh, somebody can just wave his hand and, you know, some electrical, you know, power flows out of their head. That's not what we're talking about. All right. <laughs> it, it's not being able to lift a car and all of that. All right. Coming into the fullness of Christ is a dimension in our spirit, all right, that are so grown to the dimension, to the level that every faculty of our life, amen, has come to surrender and submit to the express desire and demand of God. In other words, amen, your spirit, soul, and body has come into union, into agreement with the word of God, with the will of God, with the counsels of God, amen. The kingdom of God has come to find a place, not just to rest in your life, but to walk through your life. So everything that you do, amen, is prompted by the leading of the spirit, which, of course, impacts, amen, how you carry things out in the natural. In other words, when you are mature, fully mature in the things of the spirit, amen, your, your, your sense of spiritual knowledge, amen, affects what you do, what you buy and sell, how you interact in the natural realm. 
all right and when you move in the natural realm is because you've been prompted amen in your spirit because you've been you've been guided you've been led by your spirit amen you're, you're not <clears throat> excuse me you're not <clears throat> you're not living a dual life many of us are spiritual but we're still dual we're still dual things affect our life impacts our life to the degree that it affects how we respond to spiritual things people do things to us things happen to us to the degree that that thing all right so affect our emotion that it causes us to respond in ways we are not supposed to respond that is still being dual that 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 speaks to you know a position that we have not yet come into spiritual maturity when you come into spiritual maturity one of the things you're gonna see is your ability amen to be to be constrained to be restrained to be regulated all right not limited there's no limitation in the things of the spirit but your your act your your ways your activity the way you respond are, are amen the way you interact the way you move the way you uh, 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 deal with things all right are regulated amen by the demand of the spirit regarding that situation I, I, I always like to use the example of jesus when he finished fasting the bible says all right the enemy came to him said and came to him and said all right you're hungry right why don't you turn the stone into bread the devil knows that jesus had amen the authority he has the capacity amen and he has the power amen to turn the stone into bread what the devil was looking for is for jesus to abuse his authority is for jesus amen to misuse his position amen of course anybody can turn i mean it's easy to turn a stone to bread it's a miracle I mean, people would have like, wow, what a miracle. Maybe the entire city would have, because when you turn a stone to bread, I mean, a whole mountain to bread, guess what? That feeds a whole, you know, a whole community, if not the whole, you know, a, a city. But guess what? That would have violated the principles of God. That would have violated the principle of God. So having power with God is not just an expression, amen, of, of, of spirituality. Being regulated, amen, in the use of that power is the, is, the, is the expression of spiritual maturity. God will put us in a condition, in a state where we, we can free ourselves, we can deliver ourselves, we can get out of that situation, but we choose. You see, spirituality is when your will surrenders to the will of God. When you know that, amen, you have the resource to buy that thing, but God says, wait until three days time or until next week and you decided to wait remember they don't force you to decide you make the choice based on what you have heard and you decided to wait now that is spirituality our spirituality is measured amen in our ability to surrender our will to god our spirituality is not measured in the number or in the amount of words in the word of god that we have it's good to have that all right but how we are apply what we know is where our spirituality is is defined from hallelujah that is where our maturity amen is defined from and this is what the spirit of the lord this is what the spirit of the lord is demanding from us this is what the spirit of the lord is requiring from us all right that we don't just know the things of the spirit but we become the things of the spirit let me repeat that, all right? Spirituality is not just about knowing, amen, the things of God. God wants us to become his thing because the things of God must find a place, must find a house, must find, amen, a, 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 yes, that's the word, must find a house of expression, the house that God is building. You always hear, you know, the scripture talk about God building a house. Every house is built by a man, but the builder of all things is God. And the Bible talk about we being faithful. Moses was faithful in the house of, in the house of God. God, just as Christ was faithful in, in, in his father's house, all right, and we are today the house of God. Now, a house is an habitation, a house, amen, is an habitation, is a place where things are kept, is a place where things are safe, is a place where you know there are there are information, knowledge, all right, that are within a house that you may never know. All right, they are secrets, but they are within the house. Imagine when you when you walk outside your street, you see all the houses, each of those houses, amen, are expression 
of certain knowledge, information, you know, a secret, you know, a, a blessing, favor, you know, issues. You don't, we, 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 we don't know them, all right, until you are part of that house before you begin to understand amen, the things that are happening. Everybody may just walk out of their gates. Once you walk out of their gate, everybody's like, well, 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 hello, hello, hello. You know, everything looks nice, but it, it, within that house, there are histories. God knows what is happening, good or bad, but there are histories behind every house. The same principle apply, amen, to our life as the house of God. We are all carriers, amen, of divine things, of divine realities, and sometimes struggles is all part of, amen, the house that God is building. There is a house that God is building in my life. There are certain things heaven wants to knock down, heaven wants to pull down, amen, that I'm still struggling with. Help me. You know, things you want to comprehend, but you can't comprehend comprehend things you need to understand but you can't understand them and there are things that you have achieved you have become you have become so strong and empowering those things which of course will benefit other people whatever is not going to benefit other people in your house god will continue to address those things and these are some of the things that i'm looking into this morning that within our various structure if you're in a house that is not allowing you Amen. To grow, to develop, to mature, to come to you know full spiritual uh, uh, understanding for the season. You better start praying for the Lord to give you direction because they can bring you to another house that can help you, that can enhance you, that can equip you, that can you know strengthen you at least for the season in time. Because we've got to we've got to be able to relate, amen, to our day based on the seasons of God for our life, not just based on our preference. Abraham was asked to leave his father's house. <clears throat> Many a times we don't understand what that means. To leave a place that you are used to. To a place you are accustomed to. To a place you grow up from. And that's why even sometimes when we leave our father's house. Our father's house really do not leave us. Because our father's house is not just a physical location. Our father's house has become an ideology. Has become a template of, of lifestyle, has become a thinking pattern, has become or a, how we <clears throat> how we see things, values, you know, systems. Our father's house has become, you know, an understanding, how we interpret things. Even when <clears throat> excuse me, even when they're showing us something better than our father's house, we still we still interpret that thing <laughs> based on amen, you know, the, the nature of our father's house that we grow up in. So you see, that's a that's a struggle. That's a struggle. So when they say to Abraham, leave your father's house, remember that even his father, Terah, amen, died in a, in, a, in a state, in a condition. They shouldn't have died. He, he was sent, he was empowered to take his people to a land of the promise. But he got to the place where his son died. He could not just go further. I mean, that's a major struggle that many of us are still struggling with. Yes, those struggles are there. There are things that we have built. We have built. You remember Gideon? There were things that he built. I mean, I mean, excuse me. There were things that God used Gideon to do. God used Gideon as a judge to deliver the, his, his people from the hand of the Midianite. But at the end of the day, amen, the idols of his father's house were the one that finished him. They were the one that finished him. So it is important that we understand these principles. That God is bringing us out of certain dimension and is leading us, amen, into, into a reality that will enhance our life, that will empower us, that will build us, that will strengthen us. Just looking at what this thing is saying. Thank you, Father. All right, I think we're having a problem with, um, with the network. Please just bear with us. The network is a bit slow. All right, let me quickly go to um, Genesis 28. I want to read something in Genesis 28. I'll, I'll try to stop, not uh, maybe in the next 10 minutes, and then hopefully we'll continue this later on when we get a better signal. But I think we, sh we, we should still you know, remain on this principle that the Lord is showing us. There's something I really want to look at here. Yes, Genesis 28 verse 10 says, Jacob left Bathsheba and set out for Aran. When he reached a certain place, not that he reached a certain place. This place had no name when he got there. It's a certain place. There was no name. All right. 
The Bible says he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth when he stopped reaching to the heaven. Now, this is what I quickly want to you know, express as, as I try to round up because of the network uh, this morning. We're saying some very important principle here, but the network is just very poor. All right. The scripture said that Jacob on his way amen, from his father's house, amen, he got to a certain place. And he had to rest there because the, the, the night all right, set on him there. He couldn't journey further. And as he slept by taking one of the stones all right, in this place, the Bible says, as he slept by taking one of the stones to use as a pillow, all right, the Bible says he, he had a dream. And in this dream, he saw amen, a stairway. Listen to this. I want us to note where, where, what the scripture is saying here. The Bible says, as he slept, he had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth. It's important that that concept, amen, becomes what we emphasize in terms of the, the things of God. It was resting on the earth. It was the first emphasis. And then reaching to the heaven. He didn't say to the heavens. He said to heaven. In other words, this thing was connected. This stairway. And I remember a few. Uh, uh, was it last week I was sharing? And I said while we were preaching. While we were declaring. I, I kind of have a, a, a vision of this stairway. I, I actually said, you know. Uh, uh, um, I think I said a ladder. But I felt the Lord corrected me. That it's not a ladder. It's a stairway. A stairway is different from a ladder. All right. Most time we talk about Jacob's ladder, but the Bible, amen, in fact, is talking about a stairway. And there is, there is this level of projection and movement from one dimension to another. But the, the, the important thing here, this, this stairway began from the earth. And the point that I'm trying to, you know, emphasize here is that there are things in the earth, all right, that are connected to heaven. Remember, God's desire for us in the place of prayer is that his kingdom come. His kingdom can only come when we have built, amen, a highway, a stairway, amen, a portal, a, a place where, amen, the things of God can have access into, amen, the earth. This stairway is a divine construction. If we want to understand what is happening around our life, amen, we need to, amen, come to this point where this, uh, uh, if you will, spiritual engineering of a stairway has been established within within our life, within our space, within our spirit, amen, to the next dimension of the spirit. I think this is very important because if we don't do this, then there is no way we can fully, you know, uh, uh, align and partner with the things of the spirit. And I'm saying this as I round up right now that we're looking at this point, amen, to kind of understand where we are in terms of what God is doing in the earth. Be it in the field of politics, be it in the field, amen, of, you know, the economy, in whatever condition or state, amen, that we find ourselves, we must have clear prophetic understanding. We must.